Here we are, we've got the Suzuki F10A engine, one litre. Um, all, well, not completely pulled apart, but all cleaned up, just ready to pull the pistons out. Just got the rear main seal here in my hand. We'll probably replace it. It's still soft, 145,000 kilometres it's done. So, but it is starting to get, it is starting to get a bit broad where it runs on the crank. I'm um, starting to get a bit of wear on there, so, but it is still soft. Sometimes they go hard and crack and then nothing you can do with them then. Um, so we've got it in there. Cylinder bores and that are in excellent condition. There is basically no wear, no lip, nothing in them with your fingernails, nothing. So that part looks to be in pretty good condition. Um, things like the engine mounts and that, they look like they had it. But um, we'll get to and pull the pistons out, uh, pull the rings off, put them in the bore, have a look. Probably put new rings and big ends in. Um, something else we found, the um, spigot bearing um, was really rough. Could have even been seized, but um, very graded to turn. So I'll put a new spigot bearing uh, in the back of the crank when it goes back together too. Things like that, you never know until you actually pull the motor out and start pulling the clutch apart, having a look at all the things. So, you know, something like that can be crook and you think, oh, the gearbox is crook because I'm having trouble getting it into gear or it might break when you go in reverse because, uh, um, because the spigot bearing's half seized up or completely seized up. And uh, if it runs like that for too long, it can damage the it can damage the snout on the on the front shaft coming out of the gearbox. They can get a groove on them, and then you can have a lot of trouble pulling the motor away from the gearbox. Sump's been pulled off. Everything's thoroughly cleaned up, thoroughly cleaned in there. So um, it's not going to it's going to be an easy job just to undo the big ends down here and um, get the pistons out. We'll have a look at the rings. Have a look at the bore. But from what we can see about the bore, it looks to be in pretty good nick. Uh, there's a bit of a watermark in number two from where the head gasket was leaking, but. Doesn't look too bad, there's no big pits. Everything still turns over pretty good. Had to give it just a light sand in the bore. Uh, we're still turning over, and it has to have very light rust in the, in the cylinder. Um, so that'll, that's gonna be the next move. We pull those pistons out and have a look. Here we are, just about ready to undo the big end cap. Just drop that off. We've got our number on here, which is facing the right-hand side of the engine. I might have to put that back on again. Looks like it's going to be a bit tight. Just tap that a little bit more. Put the other one on. Just let go, but not fully. Put it on about a half a turn or a bit more. Right there. Should be able to get it at that. Remember, the numbers on here are facing to the right-hand side of the motor. There we are. That's a good sign too that the bearing is still laying in the cap. If the bearings stick to the crank, that's a sign the bearings are worn or flogged or whatever. So that's a good sign. Then this is how I normally do this. We don't want the we don't want the Conrad bolts damaging the crankshaft. So that bearing's gonna stay there. So we just go like this very carefully. We just push that out so it's not gonna damage the the crankshaft, so I'd leave that on there, and I'd come up the top, put my hand around the other side. If I can find the end of that bowl again. So you always put your hand on the other side here. Just have a look around the other side. That way you can catch the piston. So the piston's not just gonna go flying out and drop on the ground. What a baby little piston. Quite dirty in there. Top ring is stuck into the groove, all that needs cleaning up. So just as well we just didn't um, um, get the head machined or welded and, um, and machined and put it back together because look what, um, look what would have happened. She would have, been a, she would have been a pretty bad experience. Everything would have had to be pulled apart again. Look how those rings sitting for a long time with water in the ball. The rings are stuck into the ring grooves. I can't even see the gap. They'll have, they'll have to be all cleaned up and... Um, yeah, we won't really know, but the oil rings are pretty level with the piston too, but they probably rusted in there too. Um, what a tiny piston, eh? What a little baby. Judging pin feels fine. Now we'll have a bit of a look at the bearing. The bearing has stayed on the crank on this side. So we'll pull the big end bearing off. Have a bit of a look at it.
Yeah, yeah, probably put new bearings in there. Yeah, it's got a bit of wear. Now look at the crank. Let's see what the crankshaft looks like. Crankshaft looks pretty good. The true test with crankshafts, I've found, is always on the inside. If there's gonna be big grooves in that journal, it'll always be on the inside of the throw. Run your fingernail across there. Yeah, not perfect. Not perfect, but we'll turn that around a bit more. So we can get another bit of a look at the bottom side there. And the inside. Yeah. Not perfect, but we'll do another turn or two. It's not like it's gonna be a... Yeah, I think that's survived pretty well. That's about where we're at. So we'll have to give everything a clean up and have a good look at the, good look at the rings. And go from there. Certainly free. So you test the gauge and pin as you normally go like that. About the middle there, it has got the very slightest little bit of play. By the time it gets a bit of oil around, it's probably got no play. What a baby, eh? Huh?